In Estancia, as a boy, I watched red tractors crumble dirt. The black fire of disc blades upturning burned leaves and corn stalks in their wake. While I collected green and red commas of broken glass in my yard and romped in mud slop of fallen tomb trunks of cottonwoods that steamed in the dawn by the ditch. Then the fairy tale of my small life stopped. Florence was one of the most dangerous prisons in America in the late 1970s. There were people being stabbed and people being killed on a very regular basis. In the 70s, it was a pretty, pretty rugged place to be. There were a lot of killings going on. A lot of inmate on inmate violence. There was guard on inmate violence. It was nothing, nothing at all unusual to be stepping in blood when you walk down the steps. You were really dealing with death every day, every day. That he's still out of prison and he didn't go back? Statistically, we're talking less than 1%. We're talking down in a tenth of a percent that he should have made it. You know, he went to prison illiterate, abandoned, alone, angry, out of control, and came out of it a, a thoughtful, literary master of poetry and kind of sophisticated and spiritually grounded intellectual. And that doesn't happen to almost anyone. He somehow turned his life around, not because of the programs that were offered to him in prison, but in spite of the systematic spirit-breaking dehumanization that he experienced in prison. Poetry, uh, uh, I don't think very many people are gonna leave here and uh, make a living writing poetry. Cardwell thought, Probably all literature was effeminate in some ways, and poetry was the worst. I think he had it out for people like Jimmy. He saw everything that Jimmy would do as a personal uh, challenge to his authority. Cardwell, who was the warden, hated smart prisoners. He just said, I got no use for smart convicts. <laughs> in his eyes, uh, Jimmy was dangerous, and he was. Because he was showing that whole system there was something else going on. I am living with downright damnable gangsters, blood spewing, cursing madmen. And what is needed is to look straight into the eye of this terrible existence and then slowly and with the utmost reverence compose their lives and feelings and loves. I would look up and realize that nine calendar days had passed and it didn't even seem like a day, and I would ask myself, how did nine days pass? Jimmy was another Jimmy behind that typewriter. Jimmy was in a cocoon world all by himself. And all I could hear is him tapping away. Ba -ba 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 tack, 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 all night, yeah. It was day in, day out, like, uh, reading and talking about writing and poetry every day, just about. Writing prevailed over everything and almost made me a phantom of myself. I didn't care if I ate, I didn't care if I slept, I didn't care if I was in a prison, I didn't care if I wasn't in a prison. The only thing that I waited for when I woke up was to get back into the book, get back into the journal, get back into this place where I became mist over the island. He was teaching me, you know, he was teaching me how to to how poetry works and where it comes from, he would tell me, you know, these things, you know. He probably saved my life more times than he thinks, you know, because if I hadn't been doing what he was doing, I don't know what would have happened to me, you know. I, I would have killed people, and I would have got killed, you know, simple as that, I wouldn't be here. I am learning to look at myself differently, to see the scattered remnants of hope and dreams and collect them again. Return to my old house 
after the war. Pick through the debris for old photos of mind and soul. Glue together my fallen statues of justice and honor and carefully wrap them in my heart for the long trip back. Jimmy's gone through a transformation that anybody from any walk of life has to take some sort of meaning from. It's not just for, you know, drug users and convicts. It's not just for Chicanos. It's not just for other writers. If anybody listens wholeheartedly to Jimmy's story, there would be so many teaching points and lessons learned that could be passed on and help so many people. I cannot fly or make something appear in my hand. I cannot make the heavens open or the earth tremble. I can live with myself and I am amazed at myself, at my beauty, at my love. I am taken by my failures. I'm astounded by my fears. I'm stubborn and I'm childish. And in the midst of this wreckage of life they've incurred, I practice being myself. And I have found parts of myself never dreamed of by me. They were goaded out from under rocks in my heart. When the walls were built higher, when the water was turned off, when they painted the windows black, I followed these signs. Like an old tracker followed the tracks deep into himself. Followed the blood-spotted path deeper into dangerous regions and found so many parts of myself who taught me that water is not everything and gave me new eyes to see through walls and when they spoke, sunlight came out of their mouths and I was laughing at me with them. And we laughed at like children. And we made packs to always be loyal. Who understands me when I say this is beautiful?